In its early days, aesthetic medicine was dominated by men, but many women feel that a female practitioner has a better understanding of how they see beauty. Dr. Fatima Baba is one of the new generation of aesthetic practitioners, and as a cancer survivor, she also appreciates the need to empower patients who are fighting the disease. She pursues excellence on many levels, and I chatted to her about her motivation and inspiration. Information is every bit as important as technique and medication to Dr. Fatima Baba. She's a firm believer in keeping herself and her patients informed about the latest developments in aesthetic medicine, as well as dispelling myths and marketing hype. News of Dr. Fatima Baba has been flooding my social media feed in the best way possible. Every time I see a post from her, I feel happy and bold. It's this exact reason why I'm here today, to soak up the positive energy in real life. Dr. Barber's practice counts a number of local celebrities among its clients, including showbiz personalities and international pageant winners. I'm so sorry to have kept you waiting. How wonderful to meet you! Fatima, where does your story begin? I'm from Standerton, a little town in Mpumalanga, and I went to the only English medium school there. It was a nice close-knit community. It was awesome. I loved it. What did you want to be when you were little, or have you always wanted to be Dr. Baba? I wanted to be an engineer. That was my dream. But in retrospect, if I had to go back in time, I would be a doctor every single time. What inspired you to go into aesthetic medicine? I was actually a registrar in anesthetics. So I was specializing. I got diagnosed with cancer in 2010, and I had surgery and chemotherapy, after which I had every side effect known to man, literally. I couldn't lift my hands, and if you know, anesthetists need to do this motion a lot, and I couldn't do that. My sisters were already in aesthetic medicine, and then in 2011, I joined them. What is your philosophy as an aesthetic doctor? Woman empowerment and just giving women that boost in life is really my motto. What are some of the common myths and marketing messages that you'd like to dispel when it comes to aesthetic medicine? People always assume that you need to start when you're already wrinkly and and aged and you really don't. The earlier you start, the better your results would be because we're going to do maintenance and prevention instead of cure, treatment and maintenance. And it's not only for the rich and famous. Just because you are a receptionist doesn't mean that you can't look nice. Zach, why don't you follow me this way and I'll show you some treatments. Fatima's sisters share her passion for aesthetic medicine and are all well-versed in using the latest non-invasive technology. This is my sister, Dr. Bibi Aisha Baba. Hello, Bibi Aisha. Hi. Today, she's performing what we call a Tixel laser. She's basically got dark circles around her eyes and she's got milia. So we use the laser that gives us a little stamp-like section around the eyes that's going to cause elastin and collagen stimulation, give us channels that we can use to introduce um, product into the face and also help us with the crepiness around her eyes. So she's going to get a, a rejuvenated, hopefully a better eye area in about two weeks. What I like about it is that we can use it on African and Asian skin type. We're going to leave Bibaisha to finish with the patient and I'm going to show you the next treatment in the next room. Fillers for the face have been available for quite some time, but now there's also hope for thinning hair. Fatima, what is hair rejuvenation? So hair rejuvenation is multifold, but the one we're going to do today is something called hair filler. How does it work? We basically take the hair filler, which is a little syringe like this, we split up the person's hair into the areas that are most affected and we, and we inject. The hyaluronic acid stimulates the hair follicles to give us hair growth. So you can use it to regrow patchy eyebrows? You can definitely, definitely do it for thinning your eyebrows and that's my favorite part because we use a syringe like this for four treatments in an eyebrow. It's not a very labor intensive procedure, it's quite short. We basically just split up the hair and then inject into the scalp in little sections. So we know the areas that are troubling her the most and that are the areas that we will concentrate on. Fatima, when you had cancer, did you experience hair loss and did this affect your self-image? When I had cancer, I had partially lost all my hair. I lost my eyebrows and my eyelashes. 
So it really affects you in terms of being sociable. I think when you have cancer, you need to go out and try and be as normal as you possibly can. But if you don't have hair, it's a bit hard to be that person. What is the biggest lesson you learned from your journey with cancer? When I got diagnosed with cancer, a lot of things made sense. You realize that life is so short and there are things that you need to focus on. And I started focusing on those things. So it was the best thing that ever happened to me. It made me focus better than I've ever, ever done before. Fatima, how do you empower your patients who are fighting cancer? The first thing for me is to explain to them that you haven't done anything wrong to deserve cancer. A lot of people beat themselves up, like I've done something wrong, God is punishing me, it's a payment for my sins or what have you. The second thing is, is that you have to believe that you're going to get better. So for me, it's meditation, it's positivity, support, your friends, your partner, people that you know. You run a cancer support group. We have an entire group of women and we go and support you. So if you feel that I've had cancer, I can talk to you. If you would want someone who's had breast cancer like you, colon cancer, whatever, we'll find someone who's walked that road like you. And you never know, someone can say a word of wisdom that you may need on that day. We try our best and we're hoping to do more in the future. Zaki, I'm almost done with Marshni, but I want you to try the red carpet facial. Please go next door and they'll start with you. You spoil me. Hello. Hi, Zach. You're going to lie on the bed, on your back, and cover yourself with this towel. The red carpet facial has become very popular with celebrities who need to project a glamorous image at high profile events. It's a high-tech yet simple procedure that leaves the skin of the face and neck looking rejuvenated without a lengthy recovery time being required. Zaki was already up and about by the time that Fatima had finished with her other patients. Fatima, I'm positively glowing. You look amazing. What is so appealing about a red carpet facial? What's nice about the red carpet facial is that there's no downtime. A lot of celebrities and people in showbiz use it. It gives you an instant glow, tightening, and your makeup tends to sit a lot better after the red carpet facial. What is your message for breast cancer awareness? Please do self-examinations at least once a month. Over 35 breast sonars and over 40 mammograms every two years without fail. Early detection is cure. What is your message of self-love for everyone out there? I think you need to love your truth, find what is true to you and do that, and you'll never go wrong. Fatima, thank you so much for such an uplifting day. Thank you so much, Zaki. It was a pleasure being with you.